Alright, this question is slightly more different, but that's what makes this question more fun as well. Let's take a look. We are given a sequence, defined it with this recursive formula. a1 is equal to 1, and then anything after that, we have an equals to 5 minus n, and then we multiply by an minus 1. And then the question is asking us, what if we add up all the terms? So this right here, you know, summation when n goes from 1 to infinity, an. This right here is kind of unusual, because we are not given an explicit formula for an, we are not given a formula based on n only, but rather we have a recursive formula. Recursive formula is a formula that based on the previous terms, right? So why don't we just write down the first few terms to see what happens, and that's how we can feel better about this question. Let's go ahead and do that. So for the first term, we have n is equal to 1, and we know that a1 was 1, so we can just put on 1 because it says so. The first term is 1. And then for the next turn, that's when n is equal to 2. And to get the next turn, I have to plug in 2 into here. So I have to do 5 minus 2 first. And then we multiply by a2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we have to multiply by a1. And remember, this notation just means we multiply by the previous terms. So we just need to multiply by this one. And let's go ahead and work this out. 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 times 1 is 3, okay? So the first term is 3, I mean the first term is 1, the next term is 3, and then let's see the third term. The third term is when n equals to 3. I plug in 3 into n, and then we have 5 minus 3 times the previous term, which is this 3, so let's write it down and then work it out. 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, all right? Let's continue, because I still don't really see what's going on yet, right? For the next one, we have n is equal to 4, plugging 4 into here, we have 5 minus 4, and then times the previous term, which is the 6 right here. So let's put down the 6, and then let's work out 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 times 6 is 6. So far, so good. Uh, continue. When n is equal to 5, we have what? 5 minus 5. Okay. And then we multiply by the 6. Uh -huh. And then what happens? This is 5 minus 5, which is 0, times 6, which is 0. And what will happen next, though, if n is equal to 6? Well, we follow the same formula, but then you will end up with 5 minus 6, and then times the previous term, which is 0. And of course, we'll just end up 0. In another word, we'll be getting lots of zeros after that, right? So the 0 won't contribute anything to the sum at all. So what does this mean then? If we want to add up all the terms, we only have 1, 3, 6, and 6. Those are the only numbers that we have to add up because the rest will be just a bunch of zeros. So let's go ahead and add this up. Uh, we have to have the 1 right here, the 3 right here, the 6 right here, and the 6 right here. Anything uh, else doesn't really matter. It's just 0. So let's work out 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 6. And the answer to this will be 16. And that's the answer.